What's the word, y'all? The NBA Finals is here. The NBA Finals is here. And typically, we get these reaction videos out like that. But I was in New York City for some work shoots. But I told them I will not pull up to this shoot unless I am on the first flight back to Chicago the next morning. So I woke up very early because I wanted to do this. There are so many things to talk about for game number one. And yes, I, I know a lot of people are going to talk about it being the National Blowout Association. I, I, that's not the way I saw game one at all. Yes, it ended up being like a 28-point lead at one point. But maybe it's because we've been void of NBA basketball for the last week that no matter what have ha what would have happened in game one, I would have been really excited about. But I saw so many things that are very interesting. So, so let's get into it. Obviously, the final score is 107 to 89. Boston Celtics, crowd was electric. Porzingis was back and, and was the greatest player of all time. Um, and the defense. The defense is really the main thing for the Boston Celtics. Now, game number one is all always a Philadelphia period. Jason Kidd obviously doesn't win many game ones, and this is one of the reasons why. He sees what you're doing. He's going to adjust. Joe Mazzulla, very similar. similar. He's going to see what you're going to do. They're going to adjust. But it, it might be too, too simple to say this, but the Boston Celtics played Boston Celtics basketball. And the reason I say that is because this entire season, the Boston Celtics have been a team to blitz almost none. I think that the stat that I read um, um, as doing my bunch of research before the series started, that the entire season, they blitzed 11 times. Think about how often the pick and roll is used in the NBA. They blitzed 11 times the entire 82-game season plus the postseason. But Luka Doncic is such a ridiculous pick and roll player, arguably one of the greatest that we have ever seen play the pick and roll, that if it was any person to change that, it would be Luka Doncic. But the Boston Celtics went to that and said, hey, we're going to play our brand of basketball and whatever happens, happens. And I was a little bit, a little bit scared for guys like Al Horford, for guys like Chris Stapps Porzingis, because I just watched Al Horford get towed by Andrew Nimhard, Pascal Siakam, and a bunch of other players. I saw him get towed by Donovan Mitchell in that first game or two and then simultaneously happen with like at one point it was Marcus Morris. Big Al had a great game tonight in game number one, don't get me wrong. But them switching, pretty much being, um, being okay with the switch is kind of dangerous. And I thought that because Luka Doncic is this dude that just showcased last series against the number one defense in the league, that you should probably blitz him, that the Boston Celtics will start blitzing. And they said, no, we don't care what switch you get if you're Luka Doncic, we're just going to play our brand of basketball. And that defense was so tough. Now, Luka ended up, what did he end up scoring? A lot of points, I know that. It was 30 points, 10 rebounds. He only had one assist, and he only generated six assist opportunities, which means that, that he passed the ball, and only six times his opponents took a shot, and they were one for six on those passes, which is just way low for Luka Doncic. They made the Dallas Mavericks play their brand of basketball, something that Minnesota couldn't do. Minnesota gave up a million, a million lobs, but because the Boston Celtics are not stubborn, or Joe Mazzulla and the coaching staff is not stubborn. They were completely okay with letting Jason Tatum guard the road man. It was something that I said in last... I know we're going back to the last series of Minnesota. You kind of disappointed me in that one. There was something that I was saying in the last series that I thought would have been okay if Rudy Gobert was playing Romer, guarding Derrick Jones Jr., or guarding P.J. Washington, who had another bad shooting night. Because that allows him to, to hedge on these blitzes or um, to, to, to tag on these road men and so on and so forth. And you just have a better player to guard and drop. The Boston Celtics said we're going to do that immediately. We're going to have Jason Tatum guard Gafford. We're going to have him guard Derek Lively. And we're going to neutralize your bread and butter. I think they had zero lobs. Zero. In this entire playoff run, they have like 50 more lobs than any other team. Almost more lobs than every other team in the playoffs combined. But again, number one, zero. The Dallas Mavericks, all regular season and postseason, were number one, number two, or number three. I forget. I ain't got my notes in front of me. Number one, number two, and number three. Top three and generating corner three-point shots. In this game, they didn't generate many. You don't want to know why? Because the entire regular season <laughs> and postseason, the Boston Celtics have been the team to neutralize the corner three-point shot. So when I say that they got these boys to play their brand of basketball, that was really it. Everything that Boston was, uh, uh, Dallas was known to be d doing all season long and all postseason long was void. And to hold this team to 89 points, 89? I think they are 1-11 when they don't score 100 points this entire year. They only did it 11 different times. That's regular season and postseason. That's great. And a lot of this. A lot of this. I mean, I mean, honestly, I could give credit to so many different people. When you watch Jalen Brown straight up dip, take the cookies of Luka Doncic multiple times of the game, 
That's incredible. When you watch um, uh, Chris Dasperzigas come off the bench and get some of the craziest blocks, the, the Josh Green chase down block was ridiculous. They had our boy Dom asking, he was doing it as a joke, asking if it was the greatest block in uh, NBA Finals history. When you have Drew Holiday, who was just all over the place, fighting, 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 competing, competing, competing. Like this was like... People always look at the Boston Celtics, right? And again, this is game one of seven. And 2022, when they were in the finals, they won game game one as well. And they, they lost that. So the series is very far from over. And people that are already saying it's over. And, and I mean, it, there's so much to be said. Um, this, this is a team that a lot of people look at their offense. And it happened in this game. In that third quarter, they struggled to put the ball in the basket. Uh, in the first part of the third quarter. Then Jalen Brown did his part. Um... And that's part of the thing that everybody that has been critical of the Boston Celtics say, hey, they take too many threes. And when their three point shots is not falling, what do they do next? But people also forget that they were the number two defense in basketball. Now, granted, the Boston, the Dallas Mavericks went through the number one defense in Minnesota. But this Boston Celtics team is just as good defensively as they are offensively. And my question to them was when those things happen, because it's inevitable that they are going to go through cold streaks. It's also inevitable that they're going to hit seven threes in three minutes, which is what they did in the first three minutes of this game. What do you do when your three-point shot is not falling? And the answer to that is we're going to lock down and take everything that you want. Jalen Brown, again, phenomenal in this game. Final, final stats is 22 6 two, three, and three. I, I, I think they gave him an extra steal. I think last night when I checked, he had two steals. They, they went back through the footage and gave him an extra steal. Again, everywhere where he was rim protecting. You know, sometimes you see you see wings and you see fours get blocks and it's like, it's a chase down. It's a help. De no, he was protecting the paint as if he was a Daniel Gafford or a Derek Lively. Insanity. Um, Al Horford had one of his better playoff games, and he's got a few where he, I think he had the, what, five, six three-pointer game and a couple series ago. But one of the better series or games for him as well, a couple blocks from him. Drew Holiday is just hounding. Kyrie Irving had a tough time tonight, 6 of 19. And honestly, I thought Kyrie Irving got some good shots up, um, but there are a few where I'm like, oh, that's just great defense. That's just great. Sam Hauser, <laughs> that's just great defense. Um, and again, Porzingis coming off the bench, which I thought was a pretty interesting decision in the time, but it made so much sense once you got to see it happen. And I, I was, again, I was on a flight, so I haven't, I haven't tuned into any of the TV shows that are going to be talking about game number ones, any of the podcasts that have been talking about game number ones, but I'm going to assume that there's going to be um, talks about Jason Tatum's game where the final stat line is 16 on 6 of 16 shooting. He had 11 rebounds. He had five assists. He had six turnovers. But honestly, I... He didn't have the game of a top 10 player. But I also think he had a, a decent game, right? I don't know how many times he can have the same stat line of them win because, again, this was just a well-rounded team game. And obviously, when you have a top 10-ish player, you want him to look like that on the highest stage. But I thought he was just fine because I thought his defense was was incredible. I thought his ability to create for his other others were incredible. And they also were just sending multiple, multiple bodies. One of the reasons why they could get up 42 three-point shots in this one is because Jason Tatum saw multiple eyes at a time. And Dallas's defense has been the entirety of the last two months has been this heavy gap defense, this late help defense. And I thought Tatum did a pretty solid job recognizing, again, six turnovers, but uh, recognizing the late help and, and making the passes a lot of the time. So I'm like in the middle. I don't think he had a terrible game. I don't think this was this master class. I think this was an okay Jason Tatum game. And they, if you can win an okay Jason Tatum game, I don't know what happens when he has the really good game, which I'm assuming is going to happen because he's a really good basketball player. Um, Sam Hauser. Um, if I'm taking bits and pieces from the, the Dallas Mavericks games, like, okay, what could we do better at? I think that they could do way better at hunting or um, or going after Sam Hauser and Peyton Pritchard. Some of the things that we saw um, Indiana do in last series, and I think they did it very well, where, like, at one point, Sam Hauser couldn't really play. And this was Sam Hauser was incredible. Um, and it's part of that. Like, Sam Hauser is going to compete. He just doesn't have the facilities to really stick with some of the players on the Dallas Mavericks and some of the other players, offensive-oriented players in basketball. So I think they could do a way better job with that one. And I think um, with, with Derek Lively being in the foul trouble, that really changed the way they had to play their game. Again, Kyrie Irving missed a lot of bunnies, but there was – a few possessors where it felt as though he was in some type of chamber. And I think that if the Boston Celtics are going to win this series, 
Um, Joe Mazzula has already said it. You're not going to stop Luka Doncic because Luka Doncic went on a run by himself in this one as well. You're not going to stop Luka Doncic. But you can stop slash slow down Kyrie Irving. And if the Dallas Mavericks are going to win this series four games out of seven, or I guess four games out of six at this point, both of their star players need to play like star players. They need to have the game um, game five closeout game where both of them had 36 in the previous series. Like, they need that. They, they won't really be able to afford a game where one or the other are struggling because that's how nice the Boston Celtics is. It's just the reality of it. They had Jalen Brown hit two threes. Jason Tatum hit three. Al Horford hit two. Derek White hit two. Drew Holiday hit two. Chris Zasperzingas hit two. And Sam Howes, like they had seven different players hit multiple threes on the day. And hell, Peyton Pritchard was trying to get his. I know a lot of that ended up in the garbage time, but he was trying to get his as well. So the adjustments, I, I honestly, if I am Jason Kidd, I kind of want to go into the next game and say, hey, if Tatum beats us, then, then let's do it. We don't want to send multiple bodies to Jason Tatum because we can see that on any given night, they can hit 16 three-pointers. And I think that their real stats are like 41% from the three before they, they took the starters out. So they shot 41% from three on like 40 attempts, right? Let's try to just neutralize the catch and shoot three. And if Tatum gets downhill and he makes a million layups or so on and so forth, then that's the way we're going to play because we're going to lose. Like Joe Mazzula is very big on winning the math, winning the game of math. We need to take the more three-point shots. It was 42 three-point attempts to 27. You're not going to win many games if you're the, the Dallas Mavericks, if it's that big of a three-point disparity, especially if your bread and butter, that pick and roll lob or, or the self-creation from Kyrie Irving is not happening as well. So let's try to balance out these numbers because all the other things, on the offensive rebounding, it was 10 to 10. On the turnovers, it was 11 to 12. Um, so, so when you think about that, all of the other smaller margins across the game was pretty equal. The only thing that was different is that the Celtics hit almost 10 more threes. So we want to we want to level that playing field a little bit. And again, Kidd has been a guy that's been pretty good in game twos. The Celtics have lost all game twos except for last series. So maybe they're vulnerable on their home court in this game too. I cannot wait for it. Again, for the people that said it was boring, I don't know what you were seeing. Because, I mean, just to see Chris Stapps come back and just look as good as he did was, was pretty dope. Um... And, and there's been a lot of conversations on my podcast specifically, Numbers on the Board, on YouTube, about Porzingis as a player over the last couple of years, where, like, some people on our panel was like, man, Porzingis doesn't do a good job of taking advantage of those mismatches where he won't go on the block, he won't drop step the smaller player and dunk on their head. But what I've always said is if he has a guy that is six to seven inches shorter than him and it's a 12 to 18 foot jump shot, that is basically the same goddamn thing for, than like, well, okay, let's not, not like a drop step layup because that's like an 85% shot, a 90% shot. But for Porzingis, that's what he practices. That's his thing. When he played for the Dallas Mavericks, Rick Carlisle was very adamant about not giving him post touches because he's better at this. Now his post touches are pretty good too. I think he led the league in points per possession on post touches. But that the shot that he's just shooting over the smaller defender is just normal for him. Now, again, this is, might be one of his better games. So you think about the, the entire impact, because 20 points is not really much for Chris Dasperzingas. Like, we've seen him average this before. But the overall impact, considering the scale, considering he hadn't played for 40 days. He hadn't played for 40 days. So this was as good of a perform performance as you can have. Uh, because it worked so well, I would assume that they keep him off the bench for the majority of the series, unless Dallas flips a switch and now you need him to start. Because, again, Al Horford was really good in this one. I don't know what else I can really say. Um, far from over, though. Again, I don't. I don't think this is this is a four to five game series based on game number one because I thought that the Mavericks did some pretty interesting stuff, specifically when they went on that run in that third quarter. I thought they found some things, and then eventually the shots the shots stopped falling, and then the, the Boston Celtics start to pick theirs back up. But that little stretch, the end of the second quarter and the beginning of the third quarter. That is what you're trying to replicate if you're the Dallas Mavericks. You're hoping that P.J. doesn't go over from three again. Um, but that's that's it. Game number one is wraps. Man, I cannot wait for game number two. I hate that it's like, what, four-day four difference, three-day difference? Too long. 